everyone, I'm Harry, welcome to my channel. Today we're going to do another Had Sound Life video, so we're going to try and get the times on the adults are talking about the strikes. So before we get started, if you like this Had Sound Life video at any point, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, and hit the little bell notification for me as well. It really does help me out a lot, and that way you won't miss out on any of my future uploads. There's going to be affiliate links down in the description to every piece of gear I used in this video and to record my videos. These do help support the channel out further, so I'd really appreciate if you go and check them out. Okay, so this is a brand new song from the strikes, and probably one of my favourite off their new album, and it actually has some really cool guitar parts throughout, but the whole album is kind of littered with loads of really cool guitar parts as well. The amp I'm using today is my Cornell Romney Pro, which is kind of like a Fender Tweed version on Blackface Territory, and that's been recorded by the Lewitt MTP 440 dynamic microphone. So there's a lot of delay and reverb times throughout this. There's the slap back on Albert's first parts, and then there's some more quarter note and eighth note delays, and then a spring reverb on pretty much all the parts the whole way through. So of course, to nail this, I really needed a good delay and reverb pedal in one. So for that, I decided to use the Source Audio Collider Delay and Reverb. This is a really in-depth pedal that does a lot of different delay styles and reverb styles, and it's probably one of my favorite go-to delay and reverb pedals. I actually recently did a full demo of the Collider, so if you'd like to see that, there'll be a link up in the cards in the description and pinned in the comments. And then there's a couple of other things we needed as well. I needed a really good, very light overdrive tone, and then be able to bring up the gain on it for other parts. So for that, I'm actually using the Dane by Thorpe FX. Now this has a boost and an overdrive in one. They're both sides are really, really, really good. And I'm using the overdrive just as a very light overdrive and then a bit higher for the solo parts. Then the other pedals I'm using for the second half of the solo that's played on the ESV-5, a little fuzz tone comes in. It's like this spitty gated fuzz. So for that, I'm using the Fuzz Bender by Keeley Electronics. Then one other part on the outro on the ESV-5 is like this octave part. Now it has the dry signal and then a two octave below. So for that, I was using the Pog two by Electro Harmonics, which allows me to dial in my dry signal and a minus two octave as well. Okay, so let's start to break apart all the different parts. So I'm gonna look at Albert's parts first. So for that, I was using my Matmul S Classic, which is a great vintage style Stratocaster. So the first part we're gonna look at is the main riff that's played throughout, so the... So for that, I was on the bridge pickup of the S Classic, and I had the overdrive on the Dane set like this. So the game was around 9 o'clock, super light overdrive. It's more just an enhancer type thing at this point, but there is a slight bit of grit. And then we have a spring reverb coming from the Source Audio Collider. So if I quickly show you what the S-Classic on the bridge pickup sounds like, going straight into the Romney Pro, and then I'll kick on the gain so you can hear the little gain difference, and then I'll kick on the reverb so you can hear that as well. <laughs> And for that part, I'm actually picking quite near the neck, so it's a little bit rounder sounding and isn't as bright as if I was picking near the bridge. So if I quickly pull out that riff from the intro song that I isolated so you can see and hear exactly what's going on, bear in mind we had a tiny bit of overdrive from the day and with the gain at around 9 o'clock, and all the reverb was coming from the Source Audio Collider on the True Spring Reverb algorithm. <laughs> we're going to look at is a little palm muted part that comes in where Albert's playing it on his strat. Again, bridge pickup, everything the same there. The day and had exactly the same settings overdrive wise as the intro riff. So really clean, slash on the edge of breakup. Now there's actually a slap back going on as well. It's really subtle, but it's definitely noticeable. And again, I had a little bit of the reverb coming from the Source Audio Collider. So I had the analog setting on the Source Audio Collider set up as a slap back and then the True Spring Reverb. So if I quickly show you what it sounds like going straight into the Romany Pro with the Dane, and then I'll kick on the Delay and Reverb together. <laughs> So I pull that part, isolate from the intro song. Again, just bear in mind, we had a little bit of gain coming from the Dane, and then we had the analog slap back from the Source Audio Collider, as well as the True Spring Reverb. <laughs> Thank you. 
So the next part we're going to look at is this really cool analog delay solo where it comes in where it's like... Obviously it sounds weird because there's no delay there. It's actually set up as like a quarter knife delay. So I just tap that in on the Source Audio Collider. It was on the analog algorithm again. So we get those degrading repeats as it goes on. Again, we have the true spring reverb also coming from the Source Audio Collider. And I just increased the gain on the Dane to around 11 o'clock just because it's more broken up on the solo part. And then we have the repeats on the collider pulled up a little bit as well as the mix a tiny bit more. So I'll pull out the little delay solo from the intro song. Bear in mind, we have the gain on the Dane at around 11 o'clock. And then we have the analog analog delay on the collider as well as the spring reverb. <laughs> Then the only other riff that's different, it goes back to the other riffs that we've already looked at, is the little outro, which is actually on the neck pickup where it goes. And it's playing that as the little octave thing comes in on the ES-335. So again, we have the really low gain overdrive coming from the Dane with the gain at around nine o'clock. And then we just had the spring reverb coming from the Source Audio Collider. So if I quickly pull out that part, bear in mind, the only difference was we're on the net pickup, gain at around nine o'clock on the Dane, and we had a tiny bit of reverb coming from the Source Audio Collider. Okay, so now we're going to look at Nick Valencia's parts. And for this, I was using my 1958 reissue ES335 with Monty's low output PAF humbucking pickups. So the first parts we hear are the little... And then when it goes into the chorus, though. So really simple, I had a tiny bit of drive coming from the Dane again with the gain at around nine o'clock. And then we had a bit of reverb coming from the Source Audio Collider, again in the spring reverb setting. So if we pull out the main parts with the little palm muted part and the chorus parts, and just bear in mind we had the gain at around nine o'clock on the Dane and a little bit of spring reverb coming from the Source Audio Collider. Okay, so now the solo part, we've got Albert playing the main quarter note delay solo that we've already looked at. And then Nick Valenti comes in with this other part where it's like... It's also got a delay on and it's just one repeat. So you hear it mainly when he slides up on the last night. So I just had the gain on the day and a bit higher around 11 o'clock because it is breaking up a little bit more. We were using the analog delay algorithm in the Source Audio Collider, tapped in it around a quarter note and then just one repeat with the mix quite high. And then also a little bit of spring reverb coming from the collider. So that's the first half of the solo. Then the second half, the delay gets kicked off. Everything else is the same, but then I also engage the fuzz bender by Keely Electronics to get that fuzzy spitty tone on the lead part where it goes like. So if I pull out that solo played on the ES-335 from the intro song, Isolated, so you can see and hear exactly what's going on. Bear in mind, we had the gain on the day at around 11 o'clock. We had an analog delay with one repeat around the quarter note on the collider, as well as the reverb. You'll see the collider on screen anyway. And then we have the fuzz bender engaged for the little spitty lead part for the second half of the solo. <laughs>
Then after that, there's like a little break and then we hear some chords come in as well. And they've got a chorus effect on. So for that, I was using the Waterfall by Jam Pedals. Really simple chorus sound. I'll quickly pull that isolated from the intro song. Again, we have the gain on the day and back around nine o'clock. So really, really clean. So you'll see and hear exactly what's going on when I pull that out. <laughs> Okay, so then it goes back to the main little palm muted part and the chorus riff that we've heard. Now the chorus riff is played different and in the second half of the chorus, there's like a little octave up overdub that comes in. So it's playing the same thing, just an exact octave up. So I'm gonna pull out again the main chorus riff and the octave up together. We have the gain on the day at around nine o'clock, four both parts. And then we just had a tiny bit of spring reverb coming from the source audio collider again, like usual. So that part isolated from the intro song sounds like this. <laughs> Now the last part we're gonna look at is the big outro thing where it's like. And as I said earlier, there's a dry signal and a two octave below. So I was using the POG2 for that. We have the gain on the Dane raised up again to around 11 o'clock. So it was just the Dane and the POG2 for that and a little bit of spring reverb coming from the Source Audio Collider. So I'll quickly pull that part, isolate from the intro song and you'll see and hear exactly what's going on. <laughs> So that's all the guitar parts. I also had to record in the bass because there's no multi-track out there for that. So for that, I was just using my 1960s American original jazz bass, just like what the bassist from the Strikes uses. It really sounds great. And to record all this, I was just going straight into my Universal Apollo Twin interface and using an Ampeg SVT Classic plugin, so just a bass amp plugin that was recorded straight in. I'll quickly pull out a little bit from the intro song just so you can hear the tone isolated. So the bass tone isolated sounds like this. <laughs> So there we have it. That was a look out to get the time. So the adults are talking by the Strikes. Definitely one of my favourite songs off their new album and has loads of really cool delay and reverb times. And I think the Source Audio Collider really came in handy to get all these different delays and make them all sound really close to the original song. Again, you can check out my full demo of the Collider where we look at all the different algorithms in depth and put it in an intro song. So if you want to see that, there'll be a link up in the cards in the description and pinned in the comments. Having the Dane to give us our really light breakup and a slightly bit more overdrive really helps as well. The Pog 
Mog 2 for the big ES335, Outry Rift with the minus 2 octave, the Fuzz Bender for the second half of the ES335 solo to give us that spitty gated fuzz, and then of course the Waterfall by Jam Pedals to give us that nice lush chorus sound on the chords in the little break. So let me know down in the comments how close you thought I got to the original song and any future Chad sound like videos you'd like to see me do. Again, there's going to be affiliate links down in the description to every piece of gear I used in this video and to record my videos. These do help support the channel out further, so I'd really appreciate if you go and check them out. If you did like that how to sound like video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and hit the little bell notification for me as well. It really does help me out a lot, and that way you won't miss out on any of my future uploads. Other than that, go onto my channel, check out some of my playlists, I have plenty more lessons, covers, gear demos, how to sound like videos, and anything guitar related. As always, I've been Harry, and thanks for watching.